Welcome to our lecture online. In order to understand inclined planes associated with the energy conservation equation even better, we have some additional examples which get a little bit more complicated, but it will add to the full understanding of how to deal with these types of problems. The principle is still the same. We have the work put into the system plus the initial potential energy plus the initial kinetic energy at the beginning must equal the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy plus any energy loss due to friction or resistance or anything like that. So our next example, here we have an object which is sliding down the incline. There is friction, so therefore there will be a friction force. But there's also a force pushing against it horizontally as it's sliding down and presumably accelerating downward. So, what is the velocity at the bottom of the hill? Well, the way to do that, the way to figure that out is again using the energy conservation and then figuring out how do we handle all the various components. Now notice that since the force is acting horizontally, we must have the perpendicular to the surface and the parallel to the surface components. So we have to break it up into those two components in order to be able to deal with it. Also, we have to take into consideration the weight, the mg, and the two components perpendicular and parallel to the surface of the incline. So now we go ahead and plug in what we know. Work put into the system. Now it will be negative work put into the system because the motion is downward while the force is acting upward. And it's the component parallel to the surface that we're interested in, which is f times the cosine of theta. So the work done will be a negative f times the cosine of theta times the distance traveled. The initial potential energy starting at the top will be mgh. There's no kinetic energy if we start from rest. No potential energy when we get to the bottom. The kinetic energy at the bottom will be 1 half mv squared. And then the energy loss is due to the friction. The friction force times the distance traveled. But in this case, the friction force equals the normal force times mu. Well, that's in any case. It's always a normal force times mu. But the normal force is the sum of the mg cosine theta component and the perpendicular component of the force, which is f sine theta. So those two forces together will be counteracted by the normal force. So the normal force is equal to the sum of those two, and then the friction force is equal to these two times mu, and then the work done by the friction force is normal force times mu times distance, and that is what goes over here, energy lost. Now to solve that for V, the V will become equal to this. You can go ahead and work that out and see if you get the same result. But notice it's equal to the square root of 2GH if there was no friction at all and no external forces. But because of external forces working against it, it'll be slower than that. And if the friction force will go against it as well, so it'd be slower again by this component right here. Of course, if these two together are bigger than this, then obviously it will not slide down the incline. On example number seven, we now are going to push the object in the opposite direction, starting at the bottom of the hill, pushing it upward with a force F, F is parallel to the incline, and let's start with there being no friction there. Again, we use the energy conservation principle. Any work put into the system plus any initial potential energy plus any initial kinetic energy equals the final potential energy, the final kinetic energy, and the energy lost. Well, work put into the system is force times distance. Notice that the force and the motion is in the same direction, so therefore it's a positive work input. There's energy added to the system by the work, F times D. But we start at the bottom, so there's no potential energy. We start at rest, so there's no kinetic energy. But at the end, when we reach the height H, potential energy is MGH. Kinetic energy, 1 half MV squared. And since there's no friction, there's no energy lost. So in this case, you can see that the velocity will be equal to 2FD divided by M minus 2GH. Hmm. So we still see that 2GH term, but now it's minus because we have to gain the potential energy instead of losing the potential energy. In the next example, we do the same problem again. No friction, pushing the box up, but instead of the force acting parallel to the incline, it now acts horizontally. So now we have to split up into its two components, the parallel component and the perpendicular component. And only the parallel component will push the object upward. So therefore, the work put into the system will now be the F cosine theta times D, because we need to use the force component, which is parallel to the motion, the motion in this direction. No potential kinetic energy and no kinetic energy at the start, because we started at H is high equals zero, and no velocity. But at the end, we will have gained potential energy 
and we'll have gained kinetic energy, no energy loss because there's no friction. Notice the equation looks almost exactly the same, except that the uh, velocity is now dependent upon the component of force that acts along the incline, F cosine theta, instead of F, the whole force acting along the incline. And then we'll do this problem again, but now we're going to add friction to it. So no, notice that if we have friction, the friction force is the normal force times mu, and the normal force will be the sum of the mg cosine theta component of the weight of the object, plus the component of the force pushing down, because now notice again the force is horizontal, so it has that perpendicular and parallel component. So the normal force is the sum of these two, therefore the friction force will be the sum of these two times mu. If we then work out the energy equation, work put into the system, just like what we had over here, will be F cosine theta times D, because we have to use a component which is parallel to the incline that will push the block up. There's no initial potential kinetic energy. It starts at the bottom and there's no velocity initially. Velocity equals zero. At the end, it has gained potential energy, mgh, kinetic energy, one half mv squared, and there'll be some energy lost due to friction, which is the friction force which is the two components, the, the component of the weight and the, component, the perpendicular component of the force added together times mu, which is the friction force, times d, which is the distance the friction force acts. It's positive because on the right side of the equation that indicates energy lost. And therefore, when we solve for velocity, it will end up looking like this. If you get to these nine examples in your standard well, you can probably solve just about any inclined problem dealing with energy association. So therefore, take a good look at the previous video with the first five examples, here are the next four videos, four, four examples, and that will give you a very good concrete understanding of how to deal with the inclined plane, blocks moving up and down, blocks being pushed up and down, blocks gliding downward, whatever the situation may be, and how to find the final velocity using the energy conservation equation. And that is how it's done.